Joining us now, Jeffrey Nathan, a criminal defense attorney who Skypes in from Boston uh, with our legal brief. Jeffrey, it's always good to have you here on America's Forum. And as we understand it, Judge George O'Toole Jr. has denied the defense a change in venue two times now. Will he make it a third denial? He's got to because he's got to uh, uphold his prior opinions. And then what's going to happen is the defense team is going to run across the hallway to the United States Appeals Court and say, look, uh, O'Toole uh, is a great judge, which he is, but he's just simply wrong and holding on to jurisdiction in this matter. And we, the defense team, are asking the United States Appeals Court to overturn his decision on the grounds of the fact that we just can't find a fair and impartial jury. The appeals court's going to rule uh, and they're going to overturn O'Toole's decision and throw the case somewhere else. That's what's going to happen. Jeffrey, as jury selection continues, what is the defense looking for in potential jurors? Well, they've got to try and find someone that has no connection or hasn't been affected uh, by the uh, Boston Marathon bombings, which is proving to be uh, tantamount to impossible. So I don't know how it's going to be done around here. I don't think it can. Uh, Jeffrey, we understand that some Catholics have been left completely out of the jury selection process due to the commonly held belief uh, among Roman Catholics that the death penalty is wrong. What do you make of this widespread exclusion? Is this a common trend when picking a jury, or is it unique to this case? Well, uh, to exclude a juror based upon religious beliefs is not something that I'm 100% aware of, frankly. And I'd be awful surprised if that's in the jurors' questionnaires. However, uh, we are allowed in the defense bar to, to use our common sense and our understanding of people's religious beliefs to try and get them off of a jury. I've done it, so I wouldn't be surprised if the defense lawyers in this particular case are doing it as well. Jeffrey, do you think that ultimately there's a possibility of a fair trial within Boston itself or comparably elsewhere? Well, yes, because the issue of what's a fair trial is just whether or not the jurors are willing to sit there and listen to the evidence and be impartial while they are listening to the evidence and impartial while they are del deliberating in the de jury room and then render uh, whatever is called a fair and impartial verdict. And so uh, I think that ultimately there will be a jury trial. The issue is where and then it will go to a jury. The issue is whom, if that's assuming the case does not break down to a plea bargain at some point in the process. And of course, with about a minute to go, Jeffrey, you've been uh, with us a couple of times on this, and you said you thought it would end up in some sort of plea bargain, some sort of deal. Do you think that will eventually will happen? You know, one would think because of the fact of how difficult it is to execute uh, defendants arising out of a conviction on the death penalty in federal court anyway. Let's base the music here. It doesn't happen all the time. So who's going to say it's going to happen in this particular instance when you've got a myriad of appeals all the way up to the United States Appeals Court? It'd be 20 years before the guy gets the needle anyway. If we can even find the medications that are needed to put them to death, though, I, I'd say for this reason, a plea bargain is in the interest of justice, frankly. Fair enough. Jeffrey Nathan, criminal defense attorney Skyping in from Boston. As always, sir, we appreciate your insights and analysis and uh, kind of telling us what goes on when, when they try to pick a jury. Oh, yeah. When we come back, this blizzard that's about to be unleashed on the Northeast, we'll hear from a meteorologist who knows whereof he speaks.